Oh, we're recording now those that just joined us. We're going from Hebrew chapter 11. And we are talking about faith. Faith is one of those things that is the hallmark of being a Christian. Because we go through life not being able to always see the end results. We might go through sickness without being able to see the end result. We might be on a job, the Lord might have us on the job and you don't even really know what God's plan is for you. He just said, I'm gonna provide this job for you. That seems like the best job, it may not seem like it's always exciting or you may not understand where this is going. But faith, as our text says, is the substance of things up and the evidence of what we can't see. So he may have you trying to uh, witness to somebody, you know, or you, you may be around somebody that don't believe in the Lord, and you're wondering, like, how in the world am I going to ever reach this person? But just having faith that the Lord is working behind the scenes as well. So many times when we're planting the seed, the Bible says one man planted to another man water to God bring the increase. And so um, many times that person, the Lord is dealing with that person, we just don't even know it. Okay, read on. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Read on. Brother Mike, Brother David, get, get a, another microphone so that the people can uh, uh, hear you that are online. He, we're, uh, we're at verse 3 uh, in our text today. Praise God for the saints. Praise God for the saints in person and online. Okay, read on. Verse 3. Uh -huh. that the world is uh -huh. by the word of God. The word framed. What does it mean when the world is framed? The worlds were framed. What does that mean to you? To anybody? The worlds were framed. And just shall say created. Created by God. And it, you notice it said worlds plural. Let's talk about the planets. Talking about if there's life on other planets. No, it's talking about <laughs> Venus, Mercury, the worlds, uh, the celestial bodies. There's no evidence that there's life on planets, the other planets, there's no evidence in the Bible. So, but this whole theology and religious cults that are based on this idea. But anyway, I'm not going to that. Keep reading. Frame, okay, keep going. By the word of God. Uh huh. So that things which are seen uh -huh. were not made of things which do appear. The worlds were uh, framed. You can have a seat for a second. Uh, the worlds were framed by God's word. And the Lord can speak things into your life. There's a teaching that we can speak things into existence that's false, it's not scriptural. <coughs> but. Yes. Yes, I'm glad that you, that's a good question. She asked me, did I say that it was, it was not good teaching that the Christians can speak things into existence. There's popular teaching right now that says, speak life, speak it into existence. If we say something, I mean, you hear this in the churches. If we say something, it, God has to honor it and it will come into existence. That comes out of the New Age movement. That's not Christian. That's not a Christian concept. Mm -hmm. God can speak it. God can give us a word for somebody, but our very words does not create anything. It's mm -hmm. God working through us. I can speak life to somebody. God can speak life through me as a pastor or as a, as a Christian. The Lord can work through us and speak a word of knowledge to somebody. You can encourage somebody. Um, I talk to young people that are depressed. I can say the Lord loves you. I can lay hands on them. I can speak the word of encouragement. But that's God moving through me. That's very different from saying because I have the Holy Spirit abiding on the inside that I have the ability to speak like myself. And it's false to say we have to walk around speaking positively. Don't speak anything negatively. 
because you're going to speak death. Then they take the scripture, life and death is in the power of the tongue. But that's taken out of context. It doesn't mean that, because if you read that whole scripture, it means something else. It doesn't mean that as a Christian, I have the ability to speak death or have the ability to speak life. And there, there's a doctrine out there that says, I have to go around all day saying, I'm blessed and highly favored. The Lord is with me. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm going to have a Cadillac. The Lord is going to bless my family. The Lord is going to bless my children. We don't need to do that because we're already Amen. blessed. Amen. Amen. I'm Christmas. The Lord is already, the Lord is already uh, put things in order. He doesn't need really <laughs> us to walk around frivolously to speak positively. It actually comes out of the new new thought movement, a positive confession, the belief that we are demigods gods and that we are gods and we can speak life. And that has somehow hmm. creeped into the church today. You see it on okay. TV all the time. And I have to always give that corrective to because I hear my cousin saying, I'm speaking life over myself. They have a blunt in their hand. <laughs> I didn't say which cousin, so can't nobody say what the elder he was talking about. <laughs> They'll be drinking, so I'm, I'm speaking life over myself. And they'd be on there with a dude or something. You know, no, that, that don't do nothing. That don't sanctify your life. You need the Lord to deliver you. Amen. Any thoughts or questions or responses? This is, that's a good discussion. Glad you brought that question up. All right, read on, uh, Brother David, four, number four. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice to Cain. Amen. This is good teaching. Um, if you go back to the Old Testament in Genesis, Abel brought the Lord of the first fruit. He brought the Lord his best. Abel brought the uh, the best sheep that was unblemished. It was symbolic, symbolic of the idea that we have to give the Lord our best. There's a teaching the first fruit that you give the Lord your 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 the first part of your day, all of your energy. Don't do like I did today. I worked all day, and and then I was uh, then it came church time. Normally I'm up for church, <laughs> and I'm ready to go. And I'm, you know I'm here pretty early. But today I, I waited till last minute, and then I had to get the kids ready with my wife, and then that's not giving the Lord my first fruit. And then I end up not being on time. The first fruit is, is uh, you prioritize the Lord. That's what Abel did. Mm -hmm. Abel gave his best. He didn't give any old sloppy sheep. If you go back and look, he gave a, basically a lamb without blemish, which was a type of Christ. It represent Christ. Uh, Cain, he, uh, the indication is that he didn't give the Lord his best crops. And it was an in indication of his heart. And the Lord honored Abel and uh, jealousy goes way back to this time period. And uh, Abel was jealous. I mean, Cain was jealous of Abel. You had the first murder in the history of humanity. He killed his own brother. Mm -hmm. That murderous spirit, uh, the spirit of the enemy. And uh, we get a glimpse of that. What's going to happen here in Hebrew is the writers going to go into a discourse, a historical discourse of the history of the Bible, some history, historical figures in the Bible that exemplify faith. That's what's going on right now. We read on. By which? By which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaking. Amen, amen. Uh, he witnessed that by which he, he obtained witness that he was righteous. His actions demonstrated his righteousness. That's an important concept. In the Bible, verse 4, if you look at the B clause, it says, by, we're in uh, Hebrews 11 and 4. If you look at the B clause, it says, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. His actions demonstrated his holiness. And so that's an important concept that I want to slow down on. Mm -hmm. Holiness is not determined necessarily by what you do, but your salvation and your holy walk will be exemplified in what you do. So in other words, let me say that again. In other words, I can't, I can't say, okay, I'm going to live holy, I'm going to be saved, 
and never go to the altar, never seek God, never read the word, and I just do like Muslims do, go through a bunch of religious actions, as if my actions, places that works, you, you can't, uh, uh, works by itself, it's dead. You know, faith that works is dead too, but works by itself. Without Christ in it, it's a sink, it's a sounding grass and teeth and simple. And that's what uh, 1 Corinthians talks about, chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have my charity, and I'm a sound, as sounding grass and teeth and simple. But what that means is if I go to a religious performance, if I come to church every day and don't really pray, don't seek God, don't get in the Word, don't fast, and, uh, mm. And I, now, now, even if I do righteous acts, help clean up the church, serve food, be a usher, but if I don't come in at the door and give my heart to God, to, to those that aren't saved online, um, or that's here in this recording, it's, it's worthless. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you're really saved, and when you're really living holy, when you have the Holy Ghost body on the inside, you want to be like Cain. Your actions will witness your righteousness. That's what this is saying. Because Cain, I should say Cain, I mean Abel. I shouldn't say Cain. I mean Abel. Abel's actions exemplify his righteousness. Because he had his heart in the right place, he brought the best offering he could. And here, offering in the Old Testament is symbolic of prayer. They didn't pray necessarily like they said prayers in the Old Testament. You can read all the way through the Old Testament and you can see prayer. But also the offering that they brought was a type of prayer, the sacrifice. That that they it exemplified their heart. And so when you gave your best, it's so where your heart is. And so when when, you, when we're praying, our heart should be open and giving our best to God, not a formality. Um, and by it he he being dead yet speaking. By it, he being dead yet speaking. That last part, we can yet hear about Abel's testimony. Your life is a testimony. Mm -hmm. Your life can be a testimony when we're dead and gone. And listen to this. This church has been here since 1884. We're not the first person to serve the Lord here. We can't really see the historical perspective now. But at one time, these, these pews were, empty, were, were, were full. We've been, we've been at this church doing funerals and, and the Christmas programs where the pews were full. So you can't really look at it and say, nothing's going on here. This is a religious institution, a spiritual institution that has been operations since 1884. And so the Bible says at the end of uh, verse four, he being dead yet speaking. Abel's life is still speaking to us. His righteousness is still an example to us. And that's how our lives can be. Mm -hmm. Delta Child, my dad, Superintendent Child, who poured into us. All the righteous pastors, not the unrighteous ones, because there were some ungodly pastors here in this history. But all of the righteous pastors that spoke here at Antioch is a testimony. They planted. The Bible says one man planted, another man water, and another man bring the increase. There are people that had planted seeds long before us at this institution in this city. And they've been elevated to heaven. And that's how it came, it, uh, Abel's life was. Mm -hmm. Even though he's dead, he's a testimony to us. He, 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 he lives righteously. And all of them in a great cloud of witnesses. And uh, the Hebrews 12, turn to the, the, the 12th chapter right quick. I want to show you this and then, uh, Brother David, did you have a question or are you just stretching? Okay, no problem. Read Hebrews prep. Good, because I had a thought. <laughs> I wanted to keep flowing. But that's okay. Anybody have a question? Let me know. Uh, let me read um, verse 1 here. Hebrews 12 and 1. And, and we have it on the screen here on, on uh, Zoom. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, that cloud of witnesses is a great message. That's one of the greatest messages that I that you could preach. That cloud of witnesses that verse 12 is talking about is all of the saints that have gone before us. Way back to the first martyr of the church. Way back to when they killed Stephen. 
for the sake of the gospel. Way back to the Old Testament, when they persecuted the prophets, that's the great cloud of witnesses. And they're in heaven now. And some say they're singing the songs. Some say they can see us. And they can see when we when we live and write and when we navigate in this world. And they're a, they're a what? They're a witness unto us. They exemplify holiness. They give us an example. They remind us that you're not the first one to do this and you're not doing this by yourself. Like Elder Freeland, Elder Mack, my uncle Elder May, the old saints, Bishop Mason, Martin Luther King, great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us. And it's humbling. We're not the first one to do this. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, let us lay aside every weight. This is verse 12 and 1. Hebrews. And sin which does so easily beset us. Mm -hmm. Every weight. Mm -hmm. The weight of people. The weight of individuals in our life. We're talking about this Sunday. Friends. That's going to hold us back. Romantic relationships. That's not of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Every weight. Substance, drugs, alcohol, food, whatever, money, anything we shouldn't let. The Bible says, who can separate us from the love of God? We shouldn't let anything separate us from God's love. The part of the Christian, part of the mistake Christians make is, is we have an issue of values. We forget how great God is. Mm -hmm. We forget how wonderful he is. We forget how wonderful the way of Christ is, and we substitute it for the weak and beggarly things of this world. And I want that the Lord would continue to remind us in prayer and in his word how great he is. And they used to say this in the old days, great God, great way, great day. Great God, great way, great day. The saints would say that to encourage each other. And uh, we want to lay outside every way in the sin which does easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Paul often used the metaphor of a race, of track, track and field. And my daughter Hannah does track and field. And I did it and my brothers did it. And they used to train with weights. We used to, I did it like one time. You could wear like heavy shoes and heavy, uh, sometimes ankle bracelets to train and it makes it harder, and it's an exercise. You, it, it's harder to run. But if you do that every day, it strengthens your legs. That's what Paul is talking about, laying aside every weight. Because when you take this, those weights off, now you're not hindered anymore. Paul used the metaphor of weights to help us understand the sin in our life and the thing that's so easily beset us. But Paul is telling us, the Word is telling us today, lay aside the weights, anything that's going to hinder us. Yeah. Yeah, let us go back to, to uh, chapter 11. We're talking about faith on today. And I want to encourage you today, uh, when you're going through life, you can't always see things in perspective. I remember when I was at, in Hamilton, Ohio, and uh, those that, uh, some of y'all been there, but the old church, the Freshest Spring, was a storefront church, and uh, it probably sent 40 people at the most. And uh, it was a Hamilton is a, is a small city, a mid-sized city, and nobody ever comes in. Nobody ever came to church. Sometimes we would go six months before we had a visitor. In that town, people just don't go to church that often. And uh, my dad, I imagine, he was so discouraged, but he didn't realize that he the, the few people that was coming to that church and praying, and sometimes dad would, would travel to other churches and they have him preach. He didn't realize that God was using him to plant seeds. It's faith. The Bible says what? Evidence of things you can't even see. Mm. You gotta have far-sightedness, spiritual far-sightedness. You gotta have faith. Otherwise, you're gonna get discouraged. You're gonna see the world. You're gonna say Taylor Swift is in town. Everybody's mm. going down to see Taylor Swift. She coming out for two days in Cincinnati. Then a few Ooh. months later, Snoop Dogg and them coming. You feel like, oh, I'm just going to Antioch because there's a few people there. But you gotta have foresight. You gotta have foresight. I didn't know that the Lord was gonna have me preaching in Africa when I was way down in Hamilton on East Avenue in the Mexican neighborhood in the gun violence there. And we went on Tuesday and Friday sitting under the, the Bible study 
every Tuesday, every Friday, most of my life. And on Sundays, sometimes two or three times on Sundays. And we would travel sometimes a day many times. I didn't realize what the Lord was going to have me doing and going to London and speak at a theological conference. And he said, I'm going to use every child, superintendent, to pour into these young people. And many times my dad would come in and just be children. When we were children, he had a children's church. That blows my mind. There was a time when we were going to Refreshing Spring, and the, the oldest, besides my dad and mom, the oldest people there were 10 years old. And we would bring our friends to church with us. Hallelujah. We would bring our church, friends to church, and he'd have a church full of children. He'd be teaching us the word. Can you imagine the faith that it takes to do that? And people would walk by and talk about him and say, oh, he ain't got nothing but children down there. The Lord oh. probably rebuked them people so bad. You don't know what I'm doing. You can't see what God is doing. Yeah. Hallelujah. And my brothers and sisters and I, the ones that are in the church, they're mighty in the kingdom. My sister plays the flute in worship. Y'all seen her? And that was planted in that storefront, that manger, that storefront church. The, 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 the least of these, as you have done unto the least of these, you have done unto me. The little flock, it's a faith walk. And I want to suggest to you today that God is doing something in your life even right now. You just can't see it. Oh. Hallelujah. Sometimes Hallelujah. it's moving a little bit too slow for us, but it's just at the right pace for God. You don't know what he's doing in your life. Let him do it. We're a work in progress. Don't help the devil. Help the Lord. You know how we help the devil? By complaining. We can't see it. The process ain't happening fast enough for us. Man, I should be doing something else. I feel like I need to be doing something else. Stay in God's life. If the devil can't get you back into to, to the world, he can't get you back into the drugs and alcohol, if he can't get you back into the illicit relationships or what have you, he'll get you with discouragement. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He'll, he'll get us with depression. That's what he does. He got more tools than cigarettes. The devil got more tools than wild iris rose. He got more tools than homosexuality. He got sins of the spirit. He got tools of discouragement. He got tools of anger. Hallelujah. That he will get right out. No, I Amen. can't get him with worldliness, but I can get him Praise with anger. God. I can't yeah. get hallelujah. I yeah. can't get her with cigarettes no more, but I can get her with discouragement. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. The yeah. opposite of discouragement is faith in Christ. Amen. Yes. I feel this thing today. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Praise, praise God. Me. Thank you, Lord. No, I can't skip five. I love five. Five is one of my favorite verses. By faith, uh -huh. Enoch was translated that he should not see that. There were two people. There's a third one. I can't think of it right now. Think of the person right now. There were two people that went to heaven before they died. Somebody pointed out a third person to me before, but I can't remember who it is. But one of them is Elijah. He went home in a chariot of fire. He didn't see death. I gotta look it up, I don't have to text y'all. And I, who? Oh, let me slow down. We in, we in verse five. I'm not being a good teacher today. Brother, we in verse five. Amen. Um, one person that went to heaven, there's two people. I'm gonna go with the two I know. Somebody pointed out a third to me. I said, I never thought about that. I'm going to have to think about it. But um, one person that never saw death was Elijah. And he went home in a chariot of fire. <laughs> the other person is Enoch. And I've always been fascinated by Enoch. One of my favorite mm -hmm. characters. My dad would teach on this all the time. He was so close to God. And the Lord loved him so much. He was walking in the forest one day. I'm just going to say he was in the forest. The Bible says he was walking, but it seems like he was in the forest. I can use my Holy Ghost imagination. And the Lord took him home. Yeah. He went on home. That, and I used to be like, Lord, let that be me. But then he got work for us to do here. He got work for us to do. But that was, that was amazing. But we can please the Lord just like Enoch. How you please the Lord? Stay in his word. Stay in communication with him. Stay in prayer. Stay obedient. Don't be rebellious. Humble yourself and receive what God is saying. 
The most Ooh. successful Christians are the humble Christians. The, the Christians that get all caught up in cults and the crazy stuff are ones that can't humble themselves. They don't listen. They always have an answer. They talk a lot. They always explain the scripture. And they don't listen to what you have to say. You know the type of people you be trying to talk, they talk right over you. They don't even hear you. <laughs> Try to get your point in and they talk right over you. And, but, the humble Christian, I bet Enoch was so humble. I bet his favorite thing was, yes, Lord. Lord, even though I don't feel like doing it, yes, Lord. Lord, I don't want to wash the dishes, but yes, Lord. <laughs> Lord, I just am tired, but I know, Lord, that you said it, so I know it's the right thing to do. The Lord, that just tickled God so much. He took Enoch. The Bible says, he, he, the King James uses the word translated. By faith, Enoch was translated. It says it right there in verse 5. He should not see death. He didn't even see death. It was not found. One of these mornings, soon one morning, you're going to look for me and I'll be gone. Mm. Looking for him. Enoch. You see, Enoch. Hey, Joe Bud. You see, Enoch. No, last time I seen him, he was down on down the street, man, down the way at the store. I seen him in there buying apples and oranges. He gone now. Go ahead, brother David. <laughs> uh, a little bit different, but in Acts, I can't remember the guy. This guy, he was preaching when he disappeared. He ended up in the Red City. You talking about in the Bible? Yeah. Philip. Philip. Philip, good question. Philip was translated. <coughs> um, my dad, man, my father taught on the holy stuff. He said it was like Star Trek. Like beam me up. The old Star Trek, he was like, beam me up, Scotty. And they had a machine. <laughs> and he was beamed from one place to the other. Maybe that's where Star Trek got it from. But Philip in the Bible, great point, was preaching. Out of he was preaching. We always say revival. We embellish it. But he was preaching. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden he was done preaching and he was they've seen him in another city that is amazing so the Lord been doing this stuff and, uh, but Enoch is fascinating to me the kids were looking for him, they probably had a little game Enoch, Enoch, ain't no more look for me and I'll be gone, they had little games <laughs> it was legendary <laughs> Red light, green light, red light. After a while, Enoch can't say nothing. He gone. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't answer Marco. <laughs> Polo, Marco. <laughs> Enoch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think about all this stuff, man. That's exciting for me. I love the Bible. I, I've been liking this stuff, man. It's my favorite thing to do. It's the Bible. Well, before his translation, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish out here. Before his translation, he had this testimony that he did what? Please God. Please God. That should be our testimony. Don't worry about the past when we didn't please God, when we uh -huh. made mistakes. And I did some really foolish stuff, especially back in high school and in my youth. But I got to worry about that now because I'm going to please him. From here on out. <laughs> That's the good thing about grace. We don't have to. The devil would like to hold our past up and say, ah, oh, remember you used to do all that money. You still you would have four thousand dollars right now if you would have messed that money. That's how the devil do. Mm -hmm. See, you know, yo, you shouldn't even love yourself. Why would you even love yourself? All you that's how the devil talks to us. His demonic forces. Specifically, Jesus. his demons talk to us. You ain't no uh, fifth. Look at you. Yes, you ain't yes. your forty. You ain't your fifth. You ain't your sixth. You thirty. You whatever. And you still ain't where you're supposed to be. That's the devil. Don't worry about none of that, man. And you can speak life to yourself. You can speak life to yourself. I'm not. The, the the difference is you don't create nothing and bring nothing into existence. Only God does that. Amen. But you can speak words of encouragement to yourself. Yes. 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 I'm not what I used to be. I love Thank the Lord, and I won't take it back. Self-talk is just yeah. 
That work, they teach that in psychology. It's encourage yourself. The Bible says David had to encourage himself. And there was a scripture, David had a devastating time. The enemy came when David was away and stole all their wives and burned the city down. And David came back and all of his men turned against him. He said, if you had been here, I'm paraphrasing, you should have been here, man. You are a leader. You allow this to happen? And the Bible said, David had to encourage himself. <laughs> Mm. That's good stuff. What that mm. means is when you're up against the wall, Thank and you. you up against the ropes, and you don't know what to do, but you still love the Lord. You got to mm. yourself. Thank you. Right. I'm blessed. Thank you. I'm not where I used thank to you. be. Uh, I thank, thank God I'm yeah. saved. At least I'm saved. At least yeah. I'm not out there anymore. Man. Every day you. is a good day to mm. be Jesus. Yeah. I say every sober day is a good day. I say Thank that you, Lord. I minister to people Lord. that the Lord has delivered. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. But faith, but without, I'm going to end that verse. Praise six. God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. That's why the devil works on our faith so much. That's mm -hmm. why He discourages mm -hmm. us so much. Mm -hmm. Through our children, not necessarily my children, but mm -hmm. it could be any, any of my children. Well, I got good children. But Thank you, Lord. children, it could be nieces and nephews, they will discourage you. Yes. This could be your cousins. I remember one time I was at a family reunion and somebody pulled out some uh, marijuana. I was so mad and discouraged and it wasn't my same side of my family. <laughs> and I just was so upset because drugs have devastated our family. Mm -hmm. It was just done so much damage. How could y'all do something like that? Yeah. It was discouraging. Mm -hmm. And I had to say, you know, I had to encourage myself and uh, continue to do what I needed to do to live an example in front of them mm -hmm. and be a man of God in front of them and not lose my cool and become like them and fight them. That's two wrongs don't make a right. Amen. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, diligently. seek him. Diligent <laughs> is such a good word. Yes. Yes. Diligent yes. means consistency. Yes. Diligent yes. means Yes. I'm going to serve God today and then I'm going to serve him tomorrow. And then after that, I'm going to continue to serve him. And then the Amen. next day, I'm going to serve him some more. Then the yes. next day, I'm going to go deeper. Diligent, 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 diligent. A lot of times we fall because we're not diligent. You know, it could have easily said, he's a rewarder of them that seek him. But diligent is a bag of chips to him. Seeking him in a bag of chips. Woo, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's even better. A sandwich with some fries is even better. A sandwich by itself is okay. But a sandwich with lots of fries is even better. Diligently seek him. Praise God. Thank you, Seeking Lord. Seeking him is okay. But if you mess around and be diligent, the Lord is going to bless you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Praise him, praise him. Be diligent, praise saints. Him. Yes, yes, yes. And have faith in God. Hallelujah. And a mother child is praising him <laughs> on the uh, emojis. She's clapping her hands on the emojis. Hallelujah. <laughs> diligent, Brother David. Diligently seeking, Brother David. Yes. This is Charles Madison. Diligently seeking, Heaven. Uh huh. Heaven. <laughs> Diligent means consistent. Never give up. Thank you, Steadfast in this. Man, Tomorrow yeah. at night. Diligent. Yes. He'll bless you. And yes. we're talking about faith on today. Praise we're looking God. forward to Sunday. Because we want Minister Freeland to come and bring the word. Yes. He's going to come and preach Thank that you. word. And we want to invite people out. This is a young man. This is a young man. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to try to get some, some youth out. To hear him, try to get the Freeland family out. I well, hope y'all hear this, Freeland. Come support your boy. Our own man. We got to support our own. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We want to get somebody out to hear this 
what does say the Lord? We have a man of God here. We don't have to go to London. We don't have to go to Paris. We don't have to go to Ghana. We got somebody right here. You know, and I'm going to close with this. Sometimes we look real far. We think a great person has to be from New York. But if you look up the history of even this city, it's amazing people that came right out of this city. You will be surprised. There's presidents that came out of Ohio. Ulysses S. Grant came from Ohio. He was the president of the United States. And you will be surprised. All of the wonderful people that came right here and walked these streets. A lot of times when people are great, you don't know that person is great. And then when they pass away, it's like, man, the Lord really used it. Dr. King has been to Cincinnati a couple of times. Martin Luther King. I know somebody in that family when he came to Cincinnati. Great people come out right out of the city and none other than that minister, that old minister, Chris Springer. <laughs> Amen. We want to support him. Praise the Lord. We're going to end right there. Let us bow our head. Let us stand for closing prayer. Thank God for Sister Robinson being online. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. And all of the saints and friends that are here. Mm -hmm. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you.